Okay, hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to open one of those switches. This one is, as you can see, already the new one, the new type with the uh, tapered inlets. Uh, I don't uh, particularly like them uh, because the tubing uh, prefer likes to pop off of them more easily, uh, but they're cheap. They're much cheaper than the, than the old ones, and this is what we are going to use. Okay, so first we have to get rid of the back plate. Sorry about that. Okay, so we disassemble the switch. First, the back plate, the lever, and the main body. We, I mean, I prefer to tackle the lever first. What I do is first I cut So that the air can escape more easily. Like that. Now we can pop the rubber part back in and we tackle the back plate. Uh, we cut off those wedges. They are pretty useless. old-fashioned sandpaper okay this is the preliminary prototype okay now we need to tackle the body. The body, as you can see, has three uh, notches. Those notches uh, are basically responsible for uh, the lever not traveling smoothly. And basically, if, if you view this as a hydro hydraulic uh, switch, this is okay because you want to the lever to stay in place in each of the three positions. But for our purposes as an engine, this is not what we want. So we need to remove those three. Those three. And for this, I break out the pliers. two big ones go like this and then the knife and the screwdriver do the rest Come on. 
Okay, so the notches are gone, as you can see. With the notches gone, uh, we now must tackle the edge of uh, the, cylind the switch housing so that the uh, back plate will sit in nicely. And what we do, we basically cut off the rest of the re plastic residue the center part okay and now let's see how good everything sits together okay well this is not good yet. Uh, it needs to be slightly more inside. So we, I have to take off a little bit on both sides. Both on, on the back plate and on the switch body itself. see I hope you can see this on camera uh, now the bottom uh, actually can go a little bit in this is what we want because with this we can control the tightness of the switch uh, when we glue it okay uh, now the last part the last part is we need to drill the holes so we take the switch and we have to drill all three holes into it. Uh, normally I go from the outside but with the new tapered uh, inlets you have to go from the inside and try to go with as much RPMs initially as possible. Now that we drilled, now that we drilled the the holes, this is not enough because now there's an edge around the hole, which we need to smoothen out with the screwdriver. Try to have a, one that is as flat as possible. And you usually feel when the the edge is flat enough. Yeah, this is 
this is this is probably this looks good. Okay. Now we clean everything up. Okay. And we assemble the switch back together. And we take some super glue. I usually take a brick and what I do is first I smear the glue around the edges of the back plate there and then two smidges on the edges. So now I put it back together, the brick, I press on the switch, there we go, and now we need to hold it together for a while. Okay, so the switch is now glued together, and but this is not enough. We are not satisfied. We need to test if this works. So I block the inlets. Attach the pump, pump to the center, and then I pump. If I hear this noise, which means that the pump is uh, stalling in all three positions the switch is okay and this one is all right so this is uh, my tutorial on how to modify switches tomorrow i'll show you how to modify and repair the cylinders so see you